Don't get me started. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Enzymes, the key to longevity. When I travel out of the country, the one supplement that I will never leave without, <laughs> leave home without, is Stan Bynum's Digestozyme. Sometimes you may be in a situation where you, you didn't quite get what you ordered, but you were hungry, so you ate it anyway, and it didn't have sufficient enzymes in the food. You're not feeling so good, and you want to clear the tract, clear your stomach. Well, you take three of the digestive enzymes, and that will become cleared from your stomach as fast as possible. So anyway, this is, this is Edward Howell's book, Enzyme Nutrition. See, all these are like little books, but this, this is like the classic Bible of holistic nutrition. And he, he was the world expert on enzymes up until the time of his death in 1988. But this tells the fundamental principles of the concept. What distinguishes natural foods, nutrient foods, from reactive, processed, non-nutrient allergenic foods is the presence or absence of enzymes. So we go through this whole thing about the advent of the processed food industry in the 1900s, how that all came about. But what it means is that gradually over the decades, the food industry became more and more sophisticated. The science became more and more sophisticated about figuring out how do we remove enzymes from foods for one purpose and one purpose only, which is, shelf life. of course, shelf life. How long it lasts on, on the shelf determines its economic value. That's always been the purpose of food processing. Now here's Royal Lee, in, another expert at that time. Enzymes are the most important unit in the human body because every chemical change that takes place involves the activity of enzymes. Without enzyme activity, there is no life. So i got to tell you just very briefly, there are two categories of enzymes in your body. Number one, the digestive enzymes that are produced in the mouth, the stomach, the small intestine, and some organs, whose purpose is to break down your food. And then there is another big category, larger category of enzymes in your body, the metabolic enzymes, which more than 5,000 of them have been identified and named, and these are responsible for all the various complicated endocrine, neurological, all, all the systems of your body have intermediaries and steps as, as their physiologic pathways are followed. Enzymes must mediate those activities at every step of the way. Those are called metabolic enzymes. But here we're talking mainly about the digestive enzymes because enzymes have been removed from these foods. Those enzymes were the ones that were necessary for the foods to be broken down and used by your body. Okay, great. Now, if you don't remember, if you don't remember anything else from today's lecture except this, I'm about to tell you something that is going to make that is going to justify and value your coming here today. Are you ready? You know, how, you know how when you peel a banana, you know how annoying it is that it has all those stringy things? If you want to eliminate that forever, open the banana from the bottom and peel the banana from the bottom and you won't get those string, stringy things. Little known facts. All right. I know you. <laughs> okay. So. Banana contains within it all the enzymes necessary for its complete breakdown and uptake by the body. Now, Caprice, she doesn't really count as a dog. Okay, okay. Some dogs, when you give them a big bone, they will bury it in the ground. And that is, why do they do that? Because it softens it, right. It's en enzymatic, and then they'll dig it up like a couple weeks later, and it'll be much softer and easier, easier to eat. That's enzymatic activity. Okay, now, Beaujolais, my horse is in pasture. Now, I, I finally put him in pasture. That was the smartest thing I ever did a couple weeks ago. He's up here on, um, in the hills above Milpitas, right? And, uh, it's incredible. He's, he, I, I put him in the pasture with eight other horses. He's out there, 
And these horses, I mean, I'll show you some pictures, but they are, they are big. You know, some of them are fat. It's 120 acres. These horses are out there all the, all the time. We had, you know, the, the rainiest season on record last year, remember? So we had a lot of grass growing. That's the reason for all the fires up north. Well, what it did here is it made uh, the, the, the grasses grew, and, and of course they all died in the summer, so they're all brown. So these horses are eating dead grass all year round. That's all they eat. And they, these horses are big and strong. Some of them are, are even fat. Plenty of energy is what I was going to say. But what I'm saying is, all the vitamins, minerals, and enzymes necessary for the horse's complete full nutrition is contained in this dead grass. It's the most amazing thing. So anybody is invited to come up and uh, play with Beaujolais and you can pet him, you can ride him if you're adventurous as soon as the seminar is over. Enzymes are, according to Guyton, they are compounds that change, change things in your body into usable forms. Human food comes in three forms, fats, proteins, carbohydrates. The human body does not want fats, it wants Energy. essential fatty acids, the components. So fats are broken down to essential fatty acids by means of an enzyme lipase, a category of enzyme lipases. Same thing with protein. The, the cells of, the, of your body do not want protein, they want amino acids, of course. So proteins are broken down into its component amino acids by means of proteases, which is a class of digestive enzyme. And finally, as your cells don't use carbohydrates, your body needs the individual glucose, sugars, right? Amylase, that's a category of digestive enzyme which breaks down the carbohydrates into the usable glucose that are usable at the cellular level. This entire process we call digestion. I don't have time to tell the whole story of the advent of the processed foods industry. It happened around 1900. The Bureau of Chemistry was the forerunner of the FDA back in 1912. How they let that happen. As soon as the FDA came in, it was downhill from there. Oh, this is perfect. We have about 10 minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over some common snack foods and show you. You're going to start seeing the similarities between all our popular snack foods, all our, our cookies, chips, and e even the health bars, it has gone into the field of health bars. Let's start out with, let's start out with Cheetos. Okay, so I'm going to read this. Ingre yes, it has fallen to this. <laughs> Ingredients. Enriched cornmeal, <laughs> which means cornmeal, ferrous sulfate, niacin, thiamine, riboflavin, folic acid. Okay, so they're, they're spraying two cents worth of synthetic synthetic vitamins on this to pretend like it has value. Okay, and you, you know that proportionately by law they have to do this by proportion. So whatever is first is most. You, are, you already know that, right? Okay, the second, so that enriched cornmeal was the first item. Here's the second item, ready? It is vegetable oil. And it says here, corn, canola, and or sunflower, that means hydrogenated. They don't have to use the word hydrogenated. Now we're going to go specifically into what hydrogenated means uh, this afternoon. It means it's a trans fat and it's completely indigestible. Okay, that's the second ingredient. There's also cheese seasoning, whatever that is, um, more canola oil, more maltodextrin from corn, which means liberty corn, which means genetically modified corn, right? Okay. Natural and artificial flavors. Oh, great. Salt. Well, that's good. That's one nutrient. Whey protein concentrate. Monosodium glutamate, MSG. They're telling you that's the snap in it. Lactic acid, citric acid, and artificial color. Okay. Now, I bought Cheetos Puffs and then I also b brought for your consideration Cheetos Crunchy. When you look at the ingredients on both of these, what do you think they are? 
identical to the, I mean, to the comma. This has a, has a different mouth feel. We're going to talk about food processing at the very end of the day. But these are, these are the, ex the exact same item, the exact same food, but this one is processed a little different. Okay, now remember some of those. Now this is, a, this is the, the low end of health bars, bar. This is really low end. I'm going to read you th this. Ready? And <laughs> organic brown rice syrup. Okay. So there's a lot of sugar in this. Second, organic rolled oats. Well, that's not bad. Soy protein isolate. Really bad. That is a waste product from the processing of soybeans to hydrogenated soybean oil. It is a waste product from GMO. Okay, ready? That, and that is the third item, right? Organic cane syrup, organic peanut butter, rice flour, peanuts, organic soy flour, peanut flour, organic oat fiber, organic roasted soybeans, dried cane syrup, unsweetened chocolate, natural flavor, sea salt, cocoa butter, barley malt extract, and soy lecithin. For the first three years of processing, when they first invented hydrogenated oil back in the late 90s, they would throw soy lecithin out. Then they finally discovered they could use it as a filler in processed foods, and that's what they do. So this food is like, it's got some food value, but it's a, it's a lot of sugar. This is really a lot of refined carbohydrates in this. And it also has um, genetically modified soy waste products. So not high on my list. This is actually Lara Bar. This is actually the best of the, of the health, health bars. And I'll, I'll, read, I'll read these ingredients. It's not bad. Ready? Ingredients. Dates, cashews, unsweetened blueberries, blueberry juice concentrate, lemon juice concentrate, and vanilla extract. So if, you, if you're going to eat a bar, there's nothing wrong with those. The point I'm trying to make here is in processed foods, we're seeing these same ingredients over and over again. It's really the same, the same ingredients that are used in slightly different combinations with slightly different artificial flavors added to make it think that you're getting a different food, but it's all this food is the, really the same junk. Natural flavors. <laughs> See, they put in natural flavors because the food is so dead itself that the original natural f flavors have been cooked out long ago, right? That's why they have to put in natural and artificial flavors. Citric acid, bean gum, cabbage extract, canola oil, glycerin, unbleached whole wheat flour, caramel color. So I, th I think you're getting the idea. I did the same thing in Ventura, but I, did, I didn't focus on, um, on health bars. I bought a variety of chips and cookies and cakes and other in a hamburger helper and other processed foods. But after you do this for a while, what you begin to notice, it's like, it's like the same 20 or 30 ingredients over and over again in a, a, a little bit different, uh, different combination. And then they add natural flavors and artificial flavors. At the end of the day today, we're going to talk about what a very sophisticated science, the science of adding flavors to food is. This group of scientists, they are called the flavorists. Very good. So thank you for listening this morning, you guys. We're going to take a break now for 10 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>